Do you have a principality of poverty operating in your life? God told me I was in prayer. I was, um, I was, I was desperate. I had so many things coming on going on all at the same time it seemed like i was getting hit from every direction like uh financially of course um things going on in my family uh friends things going on at school i had a lot of pressure i was um attending aviation maintenance school things were really intense it was close to graduation time and um i had things going on with my family i think but it was like i was getting just attacked from every direction i had gotten a job i was um facing eviction uh, and I had gotten a job hired for a really good job, really good job. I would have gotten a company vehicle, a uh, company phone, uh, great pay, great base salary, great commission, and I'm a great salesperson. So all that stuff, you know, I needed it. I needed it really bad. And then at the last minute, the job fell through. I got denied for the job because of um a citation uh my driving record i i could not figure out what in the world was going on and why i was always having all these types of problems all the time all the time and i was in prayer and god spoke to me god said or the holy spirit said You've been choosing to live behind the curve because you have had access to God. You have access to God, but you don't consult him about the men that you have let in your life. And through those men, a principality of poverty was able to establish itself in your life. Wow. Wow. That was so much. So let me unpack that for you. I have I have been married my I've been married twice my second husband I got married young uh he he turned out to be a heroin addict I didn't know anything about that life and I kept believing all the lies all the manipulation all the stories and all that stuff okay fine i spent way too many years with him thinking that a sanctified woman will save her husband that is a lie the bible says if you are saved and your husband leaves if he leaves you let him go because you don't know if he will do right or not that's what the bible says so anyway i'm i i i saw some you know verse and the people in the church sanctify a woman or save her husband um that is for when you're saved and your husband is not saved but he chooses to stay with you and do a good job as a husband and he's covered because of your covering that's what that means it doesn't mean that you can be married to some wayward jerk that is doing god knows what and treating you like crap and you're supposed to stay with him because you're yourself no we all have our own agency and we choose 
we we have the right to choose God or not. So you and you don't have control over anybody's heart. So don't fall for that trap. Okay, that was just a sidebar. So anyway, I was married to him, and no, I did not. I didn't have a relationship with God um, for real when I married him. I just married him thinking that he was a good guy then after i wasn't married to him anymore so of course he was always stealing my money he was always you know stealing the rent money or just this and that and i it was a bottomless pit okay so of course i was working poor with him in my life okay so then i get rid of him then i stayed single for a really long time because i had a child by my husband and i didn't want to be introducing uh different men and i didn't feel confident about trying to vet a another whole human being and have them around my son and i mess around and find out you a damn pedophile after you abused my child you know no i i was scared of that i had a horrible step parent experience as a growing up as a child and i definitely didn't want to put my son through that so i forwent dating but then i got so beat down and tired because just being a single mother um never having enough always robbing peter to pay paul and sticking them both up at the same time child i was i don't i don't know how i made it as a single mother and i only had one child um, I had, but I look back on those days and it was a blur of struggle. I have no idea how I made it because I have never been the type of woman to um, sleep with anybody to get money or for a place to stay or I just have never been a user. I'm just not that kind of person. I, I would much rather make it off my own steam and and have peace when i look at myself in the mirror and think about who i am i need to be proud of who i am i need to love me and i don't want to be loving no despicable me okay so anyway i got tired i just got tired in my soul you know struggling so hard and i could never afford anything i didn't have any familial support um i came from a very cold and loveless family and they're just not supportive people and i had a lot of pedophiles and enablers in my family so i couldn't trust them to i wouldn't trust them to babysit or anything like that so i just was tired in my soul and um there was this guy pressing on me cornering me to marry him and uh he i was just in such a vulnerable place and I was like, fine, God, as long as he's a Christian and has a job, fine. I can at least have sex guilt-free, you know, who cares how he treats me? I'm just tired of my son can't even, can't even take karate or soccer if he wants to. So at least we can have like two incomes. I can have some help. So this guy is... Taz, his name was uh, Taz. Everybody called him Taz. Um, moving in on me hard. And so I give in and I let him into my life. And next thing you know, this joker takes my car from me. He tells me he's, he's giving me another car. And he shows up with another car that's supposedly for me and and then he's like you know your car is old i'm just gonna sell it here here's this this new car for you and i'm i'm like okay good this is fine well he takes my car and he sells my car and then something came up with the new car and it had to go back or something wasn't right on it so now I'm without a damn car. And basically this guy just moved in on me and isolated me and um, and I became dependent on him, whereas before I was working and all that kind of stuff. And it was just a trap. It was just a trap. 
of the enemy. And I was so depleted, tired, emotionally exhausted in my soul. And um, I was just letting it happen. And, but at that time, uh, I started to wake up spiritually. I was starting to lean in on God spiritually, heavily. And um, he like cut me off from being able to go to church and stuff like that. I would praise God in my house, in my living room. I would sing my heart out to God. I can't sing. I sound like Scooby-Doo, but I'll be in my apartment. Woo, woo, woo. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> and guess what? God loved it. God loved it. And so one day I was praying and God told me that that man, Taz, was a hindrance to me. And God gave me a dream and showed me that if I married him and then became miserable and wanted to leave, he would he would kill me. I went to church Sunday after I had that dream. One of the uh, sisters at the church came to me with this concerned look on her face and she was like, Brandy, um, I, I've been having this dream about you and I know it's going to sound crazy, but just listen to me. She was like, I, I keep, I had this dream about you that you was dating this guy and she described him and she said, and Brandy, that guy killed you. Be careful who you date. And I had never brought this man to church with me. He was trying to he was steady, cutting me off from church. So nobody at my church had seen him. She described him. She described him to a T. So I, you know, got away from him. But you see the pattern, you know, just guys that were broken or didn't have their my best interests at heart. I let them into my life. And through these men, because see, there were demons operating in them to keep them down. There were demons operating in them because they didn't have relationships with God. So those demons had access to them. And this principality of poverty was able to establish itself in my life because I'm having relationships with these guys. I'm having sex with these guys. And that is a gateway into your spirit, whether you want to believe it or not. And so a principality is a network of demons working together in sync in an orchestrated manner targeted at you and so once these deep this principality of poverty was able to establish itself in my life then all of a sudden no matter what i did nothing would work nothing would work i have a bachelor's degree. I have uh, technical certifications. I am a licensed aircraft mechanic. I have an AMP license. Um, I have my insu uh, license to sell life insurance and health insurance. Um, I have a host of skills. I have a great personality. Like people love me. People either love me or hate me, but you know, whenever, whenever you, you're gifted, that's just how it is. Losers hate. They just do, you know, that you'll have that, but, um, great salesperson, always knocking commissions out of the park and everything. Can't keep a damn job. Whether it be my son getting sick and I have to leave too many times or, you know, this or that or uh, my car broke down or, you know, uh, my supervisor or manager would get jealous of me because of my numbers or whatever. Or they would feel threatened that I'm going to take their position or some stupid stuff like that. Like this network of demons would work together to keep me in poverty.
So, of course, since God told me about this issue, he also taught me the solution, which I didn't, uh, I didn't know. And I, I learned, um, it's really, it's been me and God for a long time. I have been a faithful church goer, um, plenty of times, but what I've learned is that no church is perfect because churches are ran by people. So you can go to church all day long, but it does not replace one-on-one -on -one time between you and the Holy Spirit. That is irreplaceable. So you're not going to go to a church and get full deliverance if you don't participate with the Holy Spirit at home, behind closed doors, nobody's around. It's not a show, you know. Um, it ain't for the bishop or the pastor or the the cook the potluck club or not it's for just you and the holy spirit so that's where i focus my attention really spiritually i'm not a real religious person if you notice in my videos i curse uh you know i'm 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 just myself i i do definitely definitely um stay away from sin because that opens the door and it gives the it gives the devil legal rights to mess with you. You can't be fornicating and, you know, getting drunk, you know, um, all kinds of you can't be getting outside of yourself and some demon not take advantage of you. So I try to stay away from all that kind of stuff, but I'm not a religious person. Um <clears throat> So anyway, to the cure. The Holy Spirit taught me that to break that principality of poverty off of me and my family, I needed to put on the whole armor of God every day for at least 30 days straight. And God taught me the steps the practical real you know like you go to church and they tell you put on the whole armor of god well what does that mean how do you do that um what are the steps to putting on the whole armor of god well god told me god showed me i experienced every single one of the things that god told me um and it's he gave me he told me to put to make a list of all the things that i have done that have given me victory over the devil and so it was a list of eight things and he told me to do those eight things every day for 30 days and see won't he bless my life so i put that um all together with like the steps they're very they're really really simple like one of the steps is read at least one scripture a day you know how hard is that sing one praise song to god a day you know how hard is that it's stuff like that but it's actually spiritual stuff none of it costs money none of it takes a whole lot of time it's just you taking the time to invest in your spiritual life right so um I just wanted to give that to you. Well, actually, I feel like the Holy Spirit wants me to put this out there because I, I get the sense that this principality of poverty has been able to establish itself in a lot of people's lives. Like, if you feel like you are getting attacked from every which way, you're getting it from family members coming down on you your boss your job is horrible or you can't get a job your house is falling apart uh your health is is falling apart um financially you're catching it you know if you feel like you are just catching it from every different direction 
you probably have a principality at work in your life. And whether it's a principality of poverty, whether it's a principality of mental impairment, whether it's a principality of attacking your health or, you know, whatever, any kind of principality, any kind of demonic stronghold, some some unseen force that has just been pressing down on you. It's probably some kind of power of the enemy. And what God has taught me is putting on the whole armor of God every single day for at least 30 days straight, you know, will break those things off of you. Now, the kick, the, the thing is after your, your 30 days, do you want to go back into bondage? No. So I have adopted putting on the whole armor of God every day because I need God's protection every day. I need God's protection over me. I need God's protection over my child, my son. I need God's protection over my grandchildren. I need God's protection over my health. I need God's protection over my finances. I need God's protection over my future, you know, and, and the, the, the things that God wants to do in my life. I need God to be a shield for me. I need God, God, I need God. I need God. You know, and um God is available. And that's the thing. We have access now. We don't have to go through the high priest. We don't have to do the 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 sacrifices of lambs and goats and bulls and turtle doves and all those things. The Lord Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice he was the ultimate unblemished righteous lamb of god and he was the ultimate high priest being the very son the only begotten son of god only the high priest could offer the sacrifice and the sacrifice had to be without blemish lord jesus met all those requirements like no one else could so there is no other sacrifice that needs to be done. We just need to access everything that the Lord Jesus procured for us through his sacrifice. And what he got for us, what he obtained for us was the keys to hell and death. Okay, to unlock the bondage, unlock every bondage, unlock all all the cells every captive if you feel like you are a captive in this life if you feel like this life is a prison sentence that you are just waiting counting your days till it's over because you feel like it's going to be glory in heaven. What I am telling you is we're supposed to see the glory of God here on earth. That's what Jesus died for. So we can have victory on this earth. So that's about it for this video. Um, Oh, you know what? I do. I want to give one more example of how the principality of poverty was working in my life. Um, remember when I was saying that I was facing eviction and I had gotten a job and then right before uh, I started the, the job uh, got denied. OK, so this is what happened with that. The the um, the principality of poverty. Like I said, it's a network of demons. You can look at it as if like, you know how plants have roots. And the rooting system underneath the plants is all intertwined. And so if you yank up over here, it's going to pull over there. So that's how intertwined this network of demons is. Okay. So, and it doesn't have to be only like once a principality gets to work in your life. Now it's not just working through your sexual partners. Now it's working through anybody and everybody around you. Anybody that a demon can have, can get into anybody that doesn't have a strong relationship with God and that and the devil has access to him so the reason why I could I 
got denied that job was because of my driving record. My driving record was clean until one day, a girlfriend of mine and her son, I'm letting this chick stay with me and her four children, which I shouldn't have did in my little two bedroom apartment for me and my son. But anyway, her son starts having an asthma attack and it's bad. I'm not familiar with asthma. I don't know anything about it, but I sure like to breathe. So I'm thinking like, you need to call an ambulance, you know, for your son. And um, I had two cars at the time, but um, I had a two, one car that we couldn't use because it was only a two seater. And then the other car, the insurance wasn't right on it. So she's crying and begging me to please to give her a ride, take her and her son to some girlfriend of hers house that had an inhaler and instead of taking him to the hospital because she couldn't afford a hospital visit and an ambulance and all that. And so I'm scared to death. This boy is like not breathing and um, I've got his crying mother in my face, just tugging on my heart. This is how these demons work, tugging on your emotions. They use your emotions against you. So not having good boundaries and in my emotions, I'm thinking the right thing to do is to take this girl and her son to get this inhaler so he can breathe. So as we're now we had to drive my car that didn't have insurance and I'm not driving wild and crazy or nothing like that. But guess what? We get pulled over that time. So I get this ticket. The cop lets us go. He could have let us go with a warning, but you know, the cops are just, it's all about money now. It's not about the citizens, but anyway, he gave me a ticket and boom 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 weeks later i'm applying for this job i'm thinking i'm a shoe in for the job and i am a shoe in for the job i'm qualified and this and that got experience and all that kind of stuff and getting a, a vehicle with the job and all that kind of stuff you know gravy um and so that ticket caused me caused them to deny when they ran my voter motor motor vehicle record there was nothing else on my record it was that and they told me it was that and god explained to me that that was the principality of poverty working in my life it worked the you know those these demons they can see the future a lot of these people that you know y'all think on youtube that are prophets a lot of them are practicing witchcraft a lot of them are paying attention to demons because demons can see the future um, and so demons can see the future. So the devil knew that I was going to get that job that, and so b weeks before he worked out a strategy to get me out of there. Now, of course I had control because I could have told her, no, I could have told her, look, you need to call an ambulance and you need to get your son to the hospital. My car is not right. And I'm not driving it because you're not going to pay this ticket, you know, or, or would I, I didn't have to give her no reason. I could have just told her no. But my point is, you see how all these different things, the, the, the enemy, you know, attacking our son's health and then the enemy, you know, tugging on my emotions through her, crying in my face and everything. And then, you know, I fall for the trap and I get in the car and do something that I'm not supposed to do. And I open myself, I open the door to the enemy and then, and I'm not even thinking about that job at this time. So I have no idea that this is gonna come back and bite me in the ass. But that's how the principalities work. You have no idea that this component over here is working with this component over here and that component over here is working with that component over here. And all of them are just attacking you from every side to crush you to crush you so that's how that's how that works so if you do if you do have if you feel like and you can pray you don't have to guess 
you can pray and you can ask Father God, El Shaddai, Lord of heaven and earth. Father God, is there anything defiling my spirit? That is a prayer that you can pray and you can ask God directly. Is there anything defiling your spirit? And I pray that God will be merciful unto you. I pray that God would speak to you in a way that you can understand and show you if there is anything defiling your spirit. And if there is, God, it took me 18 years to learn. Um, it took me 18. It took me 18 years to learn all the steps of putting on the whole armor of God. Um, and you can call me stupid. God told me that I was, I used to be crippled in my mind. So I know that at some point in my life I was, um, I guess you want to say, uh, developmentally delayed or whatever, but, um, God healed my mind since, but so why did it take me 18 years to learn this? <sighs> anyway, I put everything together. It's in my Patreon. It's, um, $1 and 11 cents. One, one, one. God's number for manifestation. Um, but you can go on my Patreon and I'm gonna uh, put my the Patreon page in my description. And uh, you can go there and just, it says um, God's 30 day life changing challenge. Cause when God presented it to me, he, he presented it to me like that. I challenge you to do this for 30 days straight and see um, how I bless your life. So anyway, I, I put it, to, it's called God's 30 day life changing challenge. And it has all the steps listed plainly. And then also um, beyond all the steps, I give you the detailed instructions and like uh, where f from the scriptures I learned this, you know, how God taught it to me and the scriptures that he gave to me um, for these steps and why they work and all that kind of stuff. It's not a whole lot, but just to give you understanding, okay? Just so that you can, if you decide to do this, then you want to understand what you're doing, you know, and all you're getting, get wisdom and, um, and get understanding. So God, uh, he taught me all these things to get victory over the enemy and then ultimately to kick the devil out of my life okay out of my house out of my body out of out of my son you know um all these things so i just want to give that to anybody that that needs it because we are all in this human life together and the more of us that are happy the more of us that are winning the more of us that love ourselves and each other, the more of us that can love each other, you know, and the better this life will be. So anyway, it's all on, it's all on my Patreon. Um, and yeah, so you have a great day and God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and may the Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace. Shalom.